Mr. Thomas, yes, your only job with the Black Bear is to work as a blackjack dealer, is that right? Yeah, it's my only job. Right, and that's the only job you've ever held with Black Bear, right? Yeah, it's the only job. So you've never personally worked with the director of security, Danny Boy? Oh, no, I've never worked with him, but he's a pretty cool guy. Right, and additionally, you've never been into the security room where Mr. Boy works primarily? Oh, no, nope. So you haven't seen the security camera footage that exists in any location around the Black Bear? No, I deal strictly with cards. Right, so if your table was in a blind spot, you would have no way of knowing that? Oh, no, I, I don't know anything about the cameras at all. Right. So, now, as a, as a dealer, you're, you're familiar with, you are familiar, though, with what kind of security concerns the Black Bear might have. Oh, yeah. Uh, maintaining the integrity and uh, making sure our patrons aren't exploited is uh, number one, number one goal. Right, and another goal is to make sure that there's no cheating involved around the Black Bear at your card tables, right? Of course, yeah. So if there was any kind of, if you vaguely suspect any type of cheating, you would want to look out for that at the credit your table, right? Yeah, of course, because at the end of the day, it will probably come out of my paycheck, my paycheck, excuse me. All right, then. <clears throat> One of the ways that cheating could occur at a table would be with a exchange underneath it, right? Uh, yeah, I suppose that's one of the many ways you could try to cheat. Sure. And you did work on the day of the 16th, right? Yes, sir. And the only two individuals at your table on the 16th were Avery Bancroft and the defendant Chase Cuffin, right? Uh, I think, what's his name? Kelly? Kelly came in uh, about 20 minutes after everybody had sat down. I dealt him in, but other right. than that, yeah. So just referring to then that 20 minute window when it was, during that 20 minute window prior to Casey Kelly sitting down, the only individuals at the table were yourself, the defendant Chase Covington, and then Miss Avery Bancroft, right? Yep, that's, that's right. Now, you would have no reason to, su to suspect your own boss, Avery Bancroft, and one of her guests of cheating at her own casino, right? I mean, as far as I know, Bancroft gave me my start. She's a phenomenal woman. I have no reason to suspect anything like that. Right, so then you weren't specifically looking out for whether or not an exchange was occurring underneath the table, right? Uh, I mean, I'm always on the lookout. Uh, we got trained, you know, so. I'm always watching. Sure, but on that day, given who was sitting at your table, you had no reason to suspect that they would try to exchange for your cases, would you? Uh, no, no reason to suspect that at all. Right, so then you weren't specifically looking out for it, were you? Well, I was always looking out for it, but I just had no reason to suspect it would occur. All right. Now, you've worked with the Black Bear for a couple of years, right? Yep. Yeah. Going on three? Sure. So you were actually then also employed at the Black Bear in 2014 as well as 2015? Yes, sir. And from 2014 to 2015, prior to April the 16th, you had never been approached by any law enforcement agents, have you? Objection to relevance? Your Honor, as per... Um, your Honor, as per a pretrial document in front of you, specifically the indictment against the defendant Chase Covington for the charge of bribery, the second element of that crime that falls on the state to prove is whether or not a bribe took place. As such, any testimony or evidence that makes it more or less likely as to whether or not a bribe occurred would be relevant testimony. In this case, the state is contending that this bribe occurred on April the 16th at Mr. Thomas's car table. Now, I have already asked Mr. Thomas whether or not he was looking out specifically for an exchange. If Mr. Thomas had additionally no reason to suspect that any kind of criminal activity could occur on that day, he would have even less reason to specifically try to be aware of any exchanges taking place. <coughs> Ask him whether or not he had been approached by any law enforcement agents, Your Honor. This is a foundational okay. question to establish his awareness uh, prior to April 16th. Your Honor, his awareness of what? his awareness of any type of criminal activity going on, whether or not he was aware of that, and whether or not that might lead him in the future to be more aware on the day of the 16th. I guess I'm not really seeing the connection. I guess I feel like there's some little piece of, of this that I'm not getting. Uh, yes, Your Honor. If the witness was approached by a law enforcement agent, and such as Detective Keenan, perhaps, and notified that there was an investigation going on and that there was some type of charge of, or some kind of investigation going on to bribery, 
against this witness's boss, or Chase Covington, and that might cause this witness to be more aware on the day of the 16th as to whether or not an exchange could take place at his table. Now, Mr. Thomas, you would agree with me that it is certainly possible that an exchange could have occurred on the day of the 16th, right? I mean, objection, Your Honor, to speculation. Your Honor, I am, Your Honor, on direct examination, opposing counsel asked this witness whether or not he saw an exchange take place or whether or not an exchange did take place. They have opened the door for further questioning as to the likelihood of an exchange. Furthermore, Your Honor, this question leaves the witness free to respond with, <coughs> no, he does not think an exchange could have taken place. He is free to ask this question. Your Honor, may I be heard briefly? I'm going to overrule it. He can answer whether he thinks it's possible or not. He's not saying whether it did or did not. He has to whether it's possible. Yes, sir. I'll let him answer. Mr. Thomas, you would agree with me that it is certainly possible that Avery Bancroft and Chase Covington could have exchanged a briefcase on that day of the 16th. Well, based on what I know about both of the people, uh, I would certainly hope not, but I guess it is a possibility that it could have occurred. Right, but you would go even further to, you would agree with me that it actually makes sense that it did occur. Uh, objection, Your Honor, speculation. Your Honor, again, I'm asking as the witness's opinion on whether or not he believes if it makes sense, hypothetically, that such an exchange could have occurred. If the witness believes that it makes no sense at all that an exchange occurred, then he is welcome to answer with that. Uh, may I be heard speculation about his own? Uh, I asked this witness about what he saw, and what he, what happened, what he, what he saw and heard. I never asked this witness anything about what he thought. Uh, this goes to speculate as to what actually happened. And what he didn't ask what he thought, but opposing counsel did. I mean, he, I think he's free to ask the question. If he doesn't think that it occurred, he can say that. Oh, yes, sir. So, Mr. Thomas, you would actually go as far as to agree with me that it makes sense that an exchange between the defendant and Ms. Bancroft actually did occur. Could have. Right. And in fact, prior to the 16th, you had never before seen the defendant, Chase Covington, carrying a black briefcase at the Black Bear Casino. Well, inside the VIP room, no. But not at any part of the Black Bear Casino, in fact. You've also never seen your boss, Avery Bancroft, ever carry a briefcase at the, at the VIP room or any other part of the casino prior to the 16th. Uh, no, sir, I haven't. And after about 20 minutes, uh, that's when Casey Kelly came in, right? Yep. Then a few minutes later, both the defendant and Ms. Bancroft left the VIP room? Yes, sir, they did. And you do not know where they went after they left the VIP room, do you? Oh, no, no clue. All right, thank you, Mr. Thomas. I have nothing further, Your Honor.